Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to another edition of Hand-Built Pottery and Sculpture. My name is Kimberly Wright. Today we are discussing part two of our Sprafito technique, tools, and tips. So let's go ahead and get started. For the last class, I basically explained everything, all things, everything that had to do with Sprafito. All right, so let's go back over what Sgraffito actually is. In the chat, if you are able to look in the chat, I'm going to uh, spell Sgraffito for you. And there it is, it's capital S-G-R-A-F-F-I-T-O. Sgraffito is an Italian word. In plural, it means graffiti, like singular is graffito, plural is graffiti. It is a technique either of wall decor produced by applying layers of plaster tinted in contrasting colors. Contrasting means opposite to a moistened surface or in pottery by applying to an unfired ceramic body to successive layers of contrasting slip or glaze. And then in either case, scratching. Scrafito means to scratch, scratching so as to reveal parts of the underlying layer. The Italian past participle scrafiato is also used especially of pottery. All right, so last week we, um, had a chance to go through a few of the steps and, sorry, tools and techniques and steps. And I'm gonna just jump right in to get to our lesson for today. Hopefully, you know, it's gonna be, I have to steady myself to be able to create my own design. So at some point you may not be able to see real fluidly, but uh, clearly, but every step by step, I will definitely um, make sure that you all can see. Please be mindful that we are recording for uh, YouTube, and if you have any background noise, once uh, you all are unmuted and able to ask questions or you know, involve yourselves in the discussion, please be mindful of the background noise and mute yourselves if you are... Um, having any noise so that you won't um, interrupt the class. All right, so last week, right now, even as we move forward, I want you all to have an opportunity. First of all, before I get started, are there any quick questions? Anybody? How y'all lovely people doing? Morning. Good to see y'all. Morning. Any questions or y'all ready for me to get started? Ready. Ready. <laughs> ready. Cool. So get busy. let me get my pieces. So last week, these pieces were so soft that I was not even able to pick them up because they had not been properly leathered. And if you can see the shape of this, the round is when I maybe turn it to the side because somehow like this, it kind of looks flat. But however, it's just a starfish type dish. And so what I'm gonna do with this one today is freehand a design in it as it pertains to drawing. To sh just, I'm just giving you a few techniques of how to approach it if you are interested in using any of these techniques. And this particular piece I made, it has like little legs on the bottom. So I'm going to do a piece with this, but it's going to be traced. The image or the design is going to be traced. So to start out, I just wanted you all to know that you can use uh, copies. I just, uh, let's see. Thank you. 
sometimes the light is just so bright that you can barely see anything. All right, you can't see any of these copies, I don't think so, but maybe possibly you might be able to see one or two. However, I just want to give you some type of example of some of the things you can use. All right, maybe you can see this better. Yep, from the side. All right, this is just one copy that I got that I was possibly interested in. And that, and even though if it has a lot of uh, really small detail, that doesn't mean that you have to use everything. You use what you want out of it. And then I just got some other copies that were not that, I mean, even though it's detailed, this is really a pattern of kente cloth from Ghana. Everybody knows kente cloth, the African pattern that's really popular. And then I have this in the Bele doll. However, I was just doing something to kind of show you. I might do something with those later. But today I just decided that I'm going to use stencils that I got from Family Dollar. And these stencils are uh, basically, you might think you're supposed to tear the paper off, but however, it allows you to spin like a wheel. Sorry. Each one in case you are trying to do some painting on some, some type of decor on something and you try to cover the other patterns. So that's what these are for. But however, this is the design. It has a few hearts on it. This is the, the design that I'm gonna use today, the one with the lines. And so you can use stencils, you can use your own drawings, you can use copy. It's up to you. And I also bought one more with like, some feathers every one except for that one is an arrow has like designs of feathers or something so, and you bought it where kim family dollar thank you they were like a dollar all right so yeah i showed you all some of the tools that i'm going to be using uh i think i'm going to use this round tool to start out with but however the first thing i want to do is for the starfish I'm going to start to draw my pattern and it's going to be pretty much simple. I think I'm going to do something that has something to do with um, the starfish body's pattern. And so I'm just going to start to, uh, let's see, draw this out. I like the pencil line. You can see it. I don't know if you all can see it, but. I see it. Oh, good. All right, so let's turn this just a bit more. All right, so from there, I'm just gonna draw a couple of little lines coming out. to each, I guess, branch of the arm, so to speak. So don't be afraid to freestyle, just take your time. Kim, I thought you would paint it first and then scrape it to your design. So if you were in class last week, which I remember that you were, you probably don't remember, but this particular color of the starfish looks like it's gray, right, Miss Diana? Yes. But actually, this is the black uh, underglaze that I put on here, but mm -hmm. it's dry down, so it gives like an ashy type of look. Oh, yes. Remember, I painted it yellow. And then I had some, a layer of blue in there, and then I painted over that with black. Yes. So both of these are already painted. And so the first thing you're supposed to do with your piece to uh, produce graffito is to do what, young people? Paint it. Glaze it. With, glaze it glaze with it. Three times. Glaze with each color three times. Underglaze. Underglaze. Glaze the layers. 
the layers of colors that you want. Yes, and usually you probably want to do about two layers. Like three is something experimental, but two layers is fine. If you want to experiment and do something else, you can. But yes, paint each. Like I painted yellow three times, then I painted blue three times. But this case, I didn't put blue inside the um, piece. All the way, I just made some kind of design with my blue. And so then, because because the piece was leathered, it absorbed all of the paint. It didn't absorb all of it, but it does definitely absorb the rays. So right now, I'm going to start scraping. It definitely absorbs some. Okay, so once you start scraping, of course, you know that you're going to be scraping wet, glaze, and clay. So these have some chemicals inside of them like that would cause respiratory problems. So you don't want to, once you have a buildup of the dust particles in them, you don't want to blow, blow that dust. You want to have a soft brush, which usually I call like a, um, I call it like a mop brush, a mop brush would be anything large and having really soft bristles. Really soft bristles. If you have a brush like this and it's like the bristles are stiff or hard, so to speak, then you might risk scratching the, scratching the piece as it pertains to your design. And so that's why I have this newspaper over here to the side so that I can collect these particles and possibly either re-enter it in some of my um, work or uh, some of my chemicals or just simply throw it away. But don't blow the, um, don't blow the, um, the dust. That's a makeup brush. You can get it at a dollar store. And a lot of you people from my class already purchased uh, some makeup brushes from that Alibaba place. Yes. All right, you may not be able to see as well as I can, but even still, I just started my scratching. However, I need to go a little deeper. On this side, I can see some yellow. On this side, I can see blue. But right now, I want to go a little deeper. And so what I'm going to do is grab another tool, which is this one, and I'm going to use it. I know that looks weird. To the side, so to speak. Okay, let me lift back up. So you're just trying to get down to the yellow right now. I mean, I mean, I'm experimenting. Like, I see some yellow and I see some blue, but, you know, if you scratch even deeper, you run the risk of even going down to the gray, which would be white when you fire it. So you have to work with your own hand and pressure, just like the same thing when I said we were doing a, what do you call that, a slip trail. So see how it's going to be with your own pressure. So, so far, that's my center. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep on going. How many colors do you have exposed, Kim? I see blue, yellow. In your center, how many colors? I see blue, yellow, and blue and yellow. White. Somebody's TV is playing. At different places. Okay. So I see blue, yellow, and white, which is actually down to the gray. I'm going to keep going. And right now I'm switching tools because each time you want to switch tools if you are trying to make different. Uh, Tape, so to speak. So right now, a lot of you have used this tool in class. I don't know what for, but I've seen a lot of people with it. Like on one side, it has kind of like a short blade and the other side it's square. So I'm going to use a square side to go into the centers of my piece. And even though I used uh, the pencil line, doesn't mean I have to stick directly to it. So I'm just going to go down a little lower. I have to lean this on my leg because I don't want to add too much pressure and break the piece being that, you know, it's just 
That's what I just realized because I'm scraping along with you, Kim, and I realized, oh my, you can break it if I if you're not careful. It's not fire, it's just leather. So well, mine you... isn't leather, mine is bone dry now. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mine found is bone it dry too. I found it easier to put the uh, the underglaze on it when it was bone dry. <laughs> So you use the flat end of the two, the square I use end. end now because I want these particular things going up the uh, the arm of the starfish. I want them wide. Okay. About this wide. So that's why I say you have to experiment with different tools. That's why I have so many out. And even you have to add some type of strength and pressure, right, Miss Deborah to kind of steady yourself. Hmm. I said, do you feel as though you're having to add, having to use your strength? You all don't see yeah. certain people. Yeah, it requires some pressure. Yeah, it requires pressure, but you still want to steady your hand. Mm. You're going in like a zigzag. Yeah, way. it's, uh, yeah, it's not coming off as, as easily as I thought it was. This is, it's almost like carving or chipping away. Yes. At but, something. But this What's is it? Chisel. Scratching. You basically scratching here. Yeah. This I have this tool out. I'm going to go to the other piece as well because. I already know I wanted to use this tool on that other, uh, I guess I want to call it a shell for a uh, tray, tray that I made. And as I go up the, the groove part where it's really uh, honed in, it's like hard to scratch because it's round and I'm using a flat piece. So it's not scratching off more, but on the edges I have to go back and scratch just a bit. Let me get rid of some of that glaze dust and go back and do my ends a bit. Nice. I'm not even finished because I'm going to do something deeper than that. But since I have this square tool out, I wanted to show you that I was going to use this heart to trace the heart here. You can use a pencil if you want to be able to see it better or your uh, pro tool, your scratch tool. Just go quickly through the design. <clears throat> Not quickly, but as far, fast as you can, with, you know, without messing up, I guess. Take a lot of time. Just stick to each piece. I mean, don't skip out of holes. Make sure you're doing the same uh, shape so that you won't forget where you were skipping over. And I think I did that one. And so here's that shape, if you can see it. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to scratch some of this. Kim, I have a question. Yes. As I'm scratching and I'm looking at what's happening now, will the glaze go and, and uh, spill over into where your design is? Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? So where you have where you have scratched out that design and you pulled up the various colors at certain parts. When you bake that, when you fire that, will we run the risk of having the glaze, like the black, for example, on yours, that cover up the part that you scratched out and therefore you won't see the color? Is that a possibility? Uh, hopefully not, because what you, because no, usually it's, firing uh, even and neat. 
But however, being that the glaze turns into liquid, once again in the kiln, it's all once again experimental. You're really just waiting to see how it's going to come out once you're done, pretty much. If that answers your question. It's experimental, but however, it's supposed to come out really, really what you see is what you get. You know how okay. sometimes you have lumps in your painting in class or it doesn't look smooth or you can see through it? And I say, what you see is what you get. If it looks really neat and smooth, it's going to come out like that. So really, uh, it should come out just as you scratched it and keeping the other parts. Unless, it, unless your painting was not really smooth and it was thick in some area, it might bubble up right there and cause like a pool. But other than that, if you do your uh, layers even and right, it shouldn't cause a problem. Okay, I'm doing a test one right now that I'm gonna bring over. So far, what I'm doing when I scratch these pieces out of the heart, I am getting my three colors that I use. I use uh, purple, gold, and black. Or if I wouldn't, I don't wanna say gold, I wanna say deep yellow. Maybe I know deep yellow. All right, so far, I know I'm flipping back and forth. This is partially how that looks. And I'm gonna just go back quick to my starfish right here. I have a bit of the little bit that I've done so far. This is my dust particle. So I just wanna keep all that close together making sure it doesn't blow anywhere. And be careful if you're working with a fan on or something like that too, you wanna to be mindful that that stuff don't get to flow somewhere. Right now I'm gonna use my small circle and see if I can bring up, even though this is like so hard, some of the bubbles that are usually on a starfish. So all I'm doing is pressing with that circle and turning. As soon as I do like a row, I'll show you all. And I'm making sure not to go too deep. This piece is not that uh, thick, so to speak. I think I'm going to do about three small ones on each row. I almost messed up my design because I didn't go in a full circle right there. All you have to do is press that so far. This is this is like gouging out uh, some of the shape. So even though I went three right here, I'm gonna skip over the next line and go three right there. One, two, three. Clean that off. Mm. Going on around. Press turn. Two. Your clay is still is still leathered, huh? No, ma'am. It's hard as a you're not. Oh, dry. you know, mine was drying from since last week. I left it out, and you're still able to get in there like that. Oh, wow! Well, she's been doing it ever since she was three, remember? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Turn. and even though you know, I always tell you, I don't know everything, but however, as the instructor, I got to be ready to show y'all. The uh, technique, y'all gonna let me have it. I know you. All right, I'm just smoothing those out by kind of like going back if I don't see it smooth by just turning in the circle one time. And these real these circles are really kind of deep. They feel really good. So I guess it's all about the tools that you use. All right. 
It is because this tool that I'm using right here, at first I was using it this way on the inside of the curve, but I found that it's easier for me to scratch using the back side of it. It's scratching much easier. Do you have your video on? Uh, yeah. Do you see it right there? No, hold on. Okay. Let me find I'm just putting it. You see that okay. tool? Okay, hold on. And so I'm using the back side of it, and it's... Uh, well, take it back a little bit. Okay. So I'm using the back side of it, and it's scraping much easier. At first, I was using it this way, uh -huh. with that little curved side, and it was difficult. But it seems to be coming off much better when I use this back side on this tool. Okay. This on the other side of that one, I think, that you're using but I'm using, I'm using this and it's scraping a lot easier than when I was trying to do it with. Does that with, have a little curve to it? Yeah. Oh, okay, I see it, it's kind of dipped in the middle too. Yeah, okay. so that one's working out pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna finish this too. Uh, anybody interested in using the Besides Ms. Darabelle, anybody interested in doing the uh, slip trail technique or the scrapito technique? No. <laughs> what do you mean interested? I'm planning on using both techniques in, in my next project. That's nice. So far, that's what I have. But I'm going to actually add some... Um, what do you call that? Slip trail to this as well so I can have... Okay. And some raised bumps for the piece. And now I'm going to go to another tool. <laughs> really what I'm doing is on this pink carbon set that I have, it has different tools on the top and bottom. And as far as what I see, you have to be careful with these tools as well because, you know, just like a hot glue gun or anything, you want to be safe as to not... Uh, damage or cut, cut yourself or something. So this particular tool has like some kind of, you can see compared to my finger, some kind of small little circular head on it. But what I want to do is go on the opposite sides where I made the three dots and I'm gonna make like some uh, half circle type line. But before I do that, I almost forgot my small circle. I want to get my larger circle. If you can see the, the difference between these circles, let me put it on my finger again. Oh, okay. So the larger circle is gonna do what? Actually, it's gonna make a larger circle. And at the, <laughs> at the end, I want it to at least make one larger circle and this is very uh, what do you call it risky being that I'm on the tip of the starfish trying to make a larger circle which probably I guess I'm, that's why I did it in like three scrapes so that I wouldn't have to add so much pressure trying to scrape down there one time and break it so that's my larger circle I'm going to do that all the way around And with anything, young people, you know it takes time. You have to make your piece, glaze it. Sometimes you gotta add designs. Just have <sighs> fun. Just have fun with it and go for it. Anybody have any uh, abstractions? The illustration to show or any pieces they want to share with us? Hey, anybody? Any illustrations from the abstraction? Any other form of pieces that you finally finished that you want to uh, share? Like the fruit or vegetables? I want to share the fact that I'm very... Uh, Thankful that none of my pieces broke in the kiln. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I must have done uh -huh. something right. 
<laughs> not only that, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of people's pieces have been breaking due to the hey, Mike. That, that different type of clay we had, the white clay or whatever that some people had. And uh, uh, actually, uh, the things that we've been making have really been fragile. And then, you know, having to transport pieces, that type of thing. So now I'm going to take this round piece, like I said, try to prop up my leg and uh, do the humps. Scratching. Well, that was kind of ugly. But since I made those three strikes, I'll get it together. What in the world? Cam, yes. can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Um, my pineapple, the colors on it, look, I, I can't tell whether the colors are even. They all look like they're running together. You know, I had, you told me to put the brown on. I should put brown on first. Let me show you. Okay. Can you can you see it? Hold on. It it looks like the colors are okay. running. Oh, there. That's fine. Because the pineapple has all those different type of, types of like uh, colors, like with the green, brown, and uh, yellow. Yeah. Uh, uh huh. Okay, go ahead and sit down, baby. I don't, you're making me nervous. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So even though you have those three colors, remember I told you to sort of like, hold on one second. I told you to sort of like add them on there, Miss Jacqueline. Remember I told you to sort of pack the colors on there and then put the next color on there and then put the next color there until it's all like completed. As long as you don't see any white, it's fine. And one thing is, I just want to show you the pineapple that I made in the beginning of the class with the excess clay from our fruit and vegetable dish, this particular piece right here. Yeah. Remember the color? I used the same color that you used, which was nutmeg, but it is a crystal glaze. So it has, um, it has some little, I don't know if you see like them rocks, sorry, them little rocks. Mm -hmm. not. It's going to have some rocks in it. Those rocks are the crystals that burst and give you those designs. So it's going to be a little lumpy in some area, areas, but as long as you don't see any white, you're fine. Oh, okay. Okay. So I really don't like the I really don't like the scrape that I did with the, that little design. I don't know. It's kind of weird. So I think I'm going to use a different tool. That thing gives me. Uh, and this is much better. What do you have now, Kim? I have this tool once again, right? Let me put it to my finger. Has like a Oh, little that little round, that little round. It's hand. not round. Okay. It's not round. It's, it's not? Round. It's like a. A, like a, 90, 90, a 45 degree angle up. It's kind of, it's like this. Sorry. Oh. Like I'll show you the large one. Where do you purchase those? At um, Hobby Lobby, a best place or? Oh yeah, like, I think I see. Sometimes they have them at different places, but this is the brand name of the pieces. It's called Kemper. This is a mini ribbon sculpting set. These tools are called ribbons or and loops. Yes, yeah, so. Um, Gosh, I don't have that one. It's okay. You don't have to have every tool. Like, it's a whole bunch of stuff I don't have, like tools and stuff I don't have, but. Who said that, Deborah Bell? <laughs> yeah. Bell, you should have their bell in our kit. You should have one with a loop. It's a, it's not a big, it's not a smaller loop, but it's a loop. Yeah, I have, I have this one right here that has a double loop on each side. Right. And then I have 
one of, let me see, there is, but see, I don't have that one that she's talking about. It's not in our if kit. You, if you bought that kit, you should have them. You should, that's what I'm saying. Like, you should have them in that I kit. I did. I have, I have both kits. I have the one that came in here, and I've got the one that, you know, came in this. Yeah, well, you this have one. But it doesn't have that one. Oh. It doesn't have that one in it. You need to look mm -hmm. on both ends because that it can't be two. I I'm, have two I'm different sizes. I'm looking at both ends. I have yeah, a I do too, but that's a that's different true. one. That's a different one that Kim was just using. The one that she was just using kind of looks like it's a miniature one of this one. See, isn't this a big one, Kim, of what you're talking about? That's no, ma'am. No. No. Isn't that what you just showed me, but a tiny one? No. Don't you have one like that? No, ma'am. You have one like that? Rock. I'm going to show, show you all the shape of mine. I know what you're talking about. You have it. You should have it. You need to look on both ends of all your tools. <laughs> Kimberly, can can they order it online? Hello, young people. That's a really special kind of set. So that's not like in some of those really basic tool sets. But however, I don't necessarily know why y'all harping on that y'all might need that particular tool, but it's I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it for nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me show you how it looks. So the one I'm using now, I hope you can see this. It kind of looks like a triangle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It looks like a what? Triangle. 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 Yeah, and the only one like, like that, there, babe. But what you showed us, Miss Deborah, was a a, a teardrop. Yeah. Yeah. There, babe, that you got one like this one. Okay, let me see, because I don't have a triangle. Let me see. See that triangle? It's like this. Yeah, I don't see that's it, it right there. Like yeah, this. no, I don't have that. It came mm -hmm. in the two set that we that. ordered. Look. It came in the two set that we ordered. Look. I know. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at everything in this set, and I do not have one with the triangle. I have, well, I do. I don't have everything that you have. I have three circles. I have three circles like this in various sizes, but no triangle at all. I have and a triangle. I that tool is in certain special tool sets. It's okay. Okay. While using so you're using that, you're scratching okay. again. And this one right here, I got one of them too. The closest I have to that, this is a big one though. Um, let me show you. Is that one right there? But what it's clay big. You it's just a regular big. square. That's cool. You can use that too. Just what use school it. she and going it's to? It's big, but I don't have a little one. Just use what. You <laughs> what school do you go to, Debbie? What you say, Regina? What school I, did you go I'm to? I'm showing you. We all. Look, they just made them look <laughs> different. They're not all the same. Wow. They just, they just, wow. Yeah. They're just not all the same. All right. So for today, I'm just going to like... Tell you know, us what you just did, Kim. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Oh gosh, that's what that's you did with line. that one. See, that's nice and thick. It got deep. Yeah. yeah, it looked like some kind of sign. What is that? Like some kind of Chinese sign. That's what it's I was thinking. It's just a heart. Yeah. It's a heart. Uh, yeah. So tomorrow I'm gonna be finished with this. Oh, okay. I'm gonna show you all the finished products of what I have in class, <laughs> and also, uh. We're going to introduce what we're going to be doing next week, tomorrow. Uh-oh. -uh. <laughs> Cam. It's just another lesson because I'm, we're not going to move on to another project until you all have finished everything that you're doing. Yes, ma'am? I'm listening. Wait, you see why I was asking that question? I'm making these little stars in the bell. 
but they're kind of they're thin lines and i was just hoping i wouldn't lose the stars once uh once it oh, it no. fires if the stars no you're not gonna lose them that looks good okay okay can you hold so that's what i'm up? can you hold that bell up all like we only saw the top portion well, oh, see, I'm making they're all unusual. Shape. They're all unusual bell shapes. They're not all the I'm same. Shape. We didn't see the whole thing. Period. You're only showing the top part. Okay, I see it. I like it. And I was going to carve some in there too, so that it looks like a starry night bell. Okay, that would be seen <laughs> like small uh, lanterns or like uh, lampshades. That would be cool. The way I'm thinking, like if you could like uh, put some kind of like lights. Uh, you know, like some people use uh, those Christmas lights or now they have like the mini lights. You can use those inside of, if you made some kind of lampshade and strung it in there. And then like if you had uh, illumination in there or light, then you can see the design there really well too. But I still like the fact that when you ring it, you'll be able to see a design in there. Yeah. All right. So before we in the class today. Uh, I just wanted to say that once again, with those two pieces, I'm going to slip trail something on there. Turn your head this way, Kim. I can't hear you when you turn your head away. For real? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this is how the pieces look that I slip trail before. Once again, let me switch the, yeah, you can see better. Pull it back some. Yeah. That's job. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is really beautiful. That piece was supposed to be like something like, remember, I said I'm going to name it something that has something to do, sorry. Um, something that has something to do with an eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, I'm rubbing across these bumps, and they are not, they, you cannot take them off of the piece because it's part of the piece. This is the, the leaf. That's pretty. That's take it away. Pretty. Take it to your, to your right. Go to your right. That's your left. <laughs> So, okay. Yeah. When you see a piece in person, it is gorgeous. It is. Even without yeah. paint. Without paint, it is gorgeous piece of work. And then this is piece I started glazing already. Oh, look at my hand. Ooh, <laughs> wow, look at that. Are you going to have that done by next week? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> It'd be nice to display it for the um, masquerade. All right. Oh, this is Spartan. Hi. <laughs> hey. How you doing? And so I just want to make Miss Regina Brenton jealous. <laughs> Remember this? Yeah. Oh. The only reason oh. I made it is because you said you was making a strawberry. And I was like, I don't right. know. You talk about you making a three dimensional strawberry, but. All you had to do was that is so pretty. <laughs> that is so pretty, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> but I said to you all, I will be uh will be showing y'all this stuff and please I want to see some of your pieces and don't forget on October 30th, young people, you have to check your emails for uh some of the upcoming events and the new schedules on October 30th. Anybody know what we have? Don't be so quiet. Don't rush to tell me. Pumpkin contest. We're having a pumpkin carving or oh, yeah. a decorating contest. And what else goes along with that, Miss Vicky? I don't remember. We have a costume. Yeah, a costume. Yes, costume contest. So we all gonna be oh. who's the carving the who is the pumpkin up under? Who's gonna Man. be doing it? Um it's yes. Buffy's. Buffy's. Buffy. 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 Uh huh. Every year, me and look at the schedule. It's on there. There's a flyer also, but it'll be under Buffy's class, and it starts at ten. Hey, Miss Tara. Hey, how y'all doing? All right. Bye. Hi.
Let me um take the put my video on. Hey. 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 Doing all right? Yeah, we're doing okay. Doing good. good. Well, we're just gonna try. Um, we're also looking to do something for um, you know, we used to do the tree lighting and the um holiday gala. We'll be trying to figure out how we can do something virtually with that as well. So I'll be meeting with the team next week so we can bring some holiday cheer to everybody. Yeah, great. Yeah, we're gonna have fun next week. So there'll be line dancing, the pumpkin decorating contest. We're gonna do costume. Even the staff, we're decorating um, pumpkins too. We can't be in the contest, but we're gonna decorate too. And we're dressing in uh, what is it, 80s wrappers or 80s stocking? What, what, what? Yeah, we're dressing in 80s costumes. We're making them ourselves, so help us, Lord. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Regina, I know you can do something from the 80s. Yes, I can. All the rest of y'all clothes is from the 60s, so y'all out. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all that. Look at Missy Theory. She ready to say something. <laughs> no, I'm not, I, was, I, I was gonna say some of us dress sisters and ages every day. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's, that's the true. Way. That's what right. What was I said? Miss Regina got some from the 80s. But I said all the rest of y'all clothes is from the 60s. Oh, I got, I got some from the season, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway. Oh, and then after, yeah, after that, too, Destiny's doing some kind of spooky treats, too. I think that's at um that's at 11.30, so it'll be fun. And don't yeah. forget to look at that schedule so you all can still join in other people's classes that you are interested in, and right now, I'm going to go ahead and sign off with you guys because I have to see what my young friend, Chef Destiny Moss, is uh, making. And talking All right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I, I need to bring some stuff down to be fired. No problem. I'm going to uh, be calling everybody to make another schedule. So, you know, that's okay. every week. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Kim. Yeah, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Kim, I have a dilemma. Um, what's happening is I was trying to carve. I don't know if you could see that little hole right there. Let's see. I was using this stencil to carve around that little, um, okay. You see, it's like the clay just popped out. I was trying to carve around it and it just popped out. Oh. Is that a hole? It wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be a diamond shape, but now there's a hole there where the top color. Uh -oh. So go with it. Where the top color came off. Huh? I said, so go with it. You see it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Do what? I said, so go with it. Yeah, I'm going to have to leave it like that. But I, yeah, I'm going to have to. But my idea was to carve the shape and have that color just come through on the outside. But now it just popped through and made a hole. Okay, but one um, issue that- I just I, want to know if you have any- One issue that I see that you are probably doing, you, you need to, not you need to, you should probably get a pencil and then trace the design from the stencil on your piece rather than just sitting it on there and trying to carve through the piece because all that is adding too much pressure. You have to have your pencil and then trace the design on your piece like I did and then just carve gently. You want to carve a little bit away and keep going down. Don't go too hard. Okay. Use your pencil okay. to trace your design. Okay. Is that okay. Prince? Is that Prince Noah? No, that's not Prince Noah. <laughs> no, nah, that's not. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Tell him, tell him we said hello. <laughs> Look at her. He's sitting right up in it. You have a new student, Kimberly. I do? Oh, right. Yeah, he's sitting right up there. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Maybe they'll join in and do some pottery with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Please, young people, don't forget to join in tomorrow for the finished uh, product products of the Scrafito, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
introduce what we're going to be doing for the next class, although it's not going to be a new project, but it's going to be something really fun that you're going to enjoy. And um, I'm really enthused that you all have taken out time to wear your mask today, but don't forget to put the mask back on again during our uh, harvest fest on October 30th. <laughs> <laughs> <He's a mess. laughs> so Kim. Yes, ma'am. So we're not making a project that we want to make no more. The DIY? Yes. Uh -huh. we, we still are. making it? Yes. That was the last yes. time I gave you all. Yeah, okay. this might be a DIY. It's Bells. Oh, I hadn't started on mine. I hadn't started on it. I'm trying to paint these other things and get them out the way. It's no problem. That's why every week I'm going through some instructional things, tips and techniques to show you all why you are completing these projects. Because I already know like the, the class, even though this particular class is twice a week, we usually had class once a week. And not only that, um, it's going on so fast, so to speak, that, you know, sometimes it would take y'all like a month to actually paint a piece. Because right. At two hours in class. But now that you're at home, you have more time, but so I'm still giving you a little time to complete these projects. Like No, I don't. <laughs> from the beginning of the projects, once again, and I'm going to um, put these right in the chat, fruit and vegetable vessels. Some people have not turned in anything. I'm serious. Nope, I'm one of them. Turned in anything. What, what was our second project? Come on, um, people. The most the most Mobius. The Mobius. 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 Mobius and uh, we had the third one's abstraction and the next one. Uh, is yeah, abstraction. Yes, and DIY. Right, you so those are the four projects that we are waiting to uh, for you all to turn in. However, we have learned two techniques. The first one was called what? Slip trail. The oh, next slip, trail. Trail. slip trail. The next one is graffito. I put All right. it in the chat. So that's what I'm looking We learned three. We learned the Mobius, too. That's a technique. The Isn't Mobius it? Is the actual project. I put it up there. Fruit and vegetable vessel, Mobius, abstraction, DIY. Thank you, teacher uh, Deborah Bell. Thank you. Tomorrow. Have a wonderful and blessed day and stay positive. Thank right. you so much, Kim. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.